Hi guys, what is up? I'm Calder from Call Ceramics and in today's video I will be showing you how to throw a planter on the potter's wheel and I will also show you how to fold the rim. By folding the rim you get a thicker rim at the top which can give quite a nice effect and later on I will also show you how to trim it and how I glazed it. So without any further ado, let's head over to the wheel and get started. I take a piece of clay and you can of course make this planter as big as you'd like so you can use as much clay as you'd like. I attach the piece of clay onto my bed by using a little bit of water and then I press the clay onto my bed. And then I start centering it. I do this by coning it up and pressing it down. I repeat this multiple times until the clay is fully centered. Then I press the clay downwards and flatten it a bit so that the bottom becomes a bit wider because the wideness of the bottom will also define the wideness of your pot. So I just do this by pressing with my fist on top of the clay. And then I start opening up the shape. I press the middle finger of my right hand into the clay and I support it with my left hand. And then I pull my fingers towards myself to open up the clay. When I do this I try to move my hands horizontally so that the bottom becomes flat and has an even thickness. Then I press the clay a little bit more inwards because this sometimes becomes a bit too wide. And then if necessary you can go over the bottom an extra time to smooth it out or to make it a little bit thinner if it was too thick. And then I press the clay towards the middle again and then I start pulling up the walls. I take a sponge in my right hand and I press towards my left hand on the inside while making an upwards movement. I move my hands quite slow and I start making a cylinder. What I like to do is hold the thumb of my left hand on top of my right hand. This way it's easy for me to move both of my hands at the same time. But when the planter becomes too high you unfortunately can't do this anymore and then you just have to move them separate from each other. Because I want to start off with a straight cylinder and the clay sometimes becomes a bit too wide when pulling it up, I hold both of my hands around it and move them towards the middle while making an upwards movement to press the clay back into the middle into a straight cylinder form. And then I just pull it up a few more times to get it as high as I can and to get the walls as thin as I can. You don't want to make the walls too thin because otherwise the whole piece might collapse. But it is nice to have a bigger piece that's not too heavy so I do make it quite thin. And as you can see I just move my hands from the bottom all the way up to the top. And then when the piece is as high as I could get it and the clay is nice and thin, I start working on the shape. I wanted the top part to be a little bit wider than the bottom part and I also wanted to make it straight. So to do this I held a wooden loamer next to it and I hold it a little bit tilted. And then I press the clay from the inside towards the loamer on the outside. And then I just go over this two times to slowly press it against it and make it nice and straight. And then I cut away some excess clay at the bottom, I used a wooden knife to do this and with this I also clean my bed. By cutting this away it saves me some time from trimming and it's easier for me to see the whole shape of the planter. Then I start working on the rim, as I told you I'm going to fold the rim into this basic terracotta planter shape. So what I do is first make sure that the rim is nice and wet so that your fingers don't stick to the clay. And then I place my index finger onto the clay where I want to fold it. You can of course fold it as big as you'd like. Unfortunately when you fold it the pot will become smaller but I do think it has a nice effect to it. So I think it's worth it. And then I press the clay from the inside over my index finger on the outside. And then I start folding it deeper and deeper. And then I take away my index finger and then I start folding it onto the clay itself. And when closing this it's important to press from the top to the bottom. So you first want to close the top part and then press downwards so that you first close the top and then the bottom. Because otherwise if you first close the bottom and then the top you might get some air bubbles in here. And that's not really nice because they might crack or even explode in the kiln. So it's important to press from the top to the bottom when folding this. And then I just go over it with my fingers a few times to really press it on there. And when doing this I hold my left hand on the inside to keep the right shape. And then it's actually already finished and I take a sponge to get rid of any water or slip that's in and on the piece. And then I cut away a little bit more of excess clay at the bottom because this will save me some time from trimming it. And then the piece is finished and ready to dry before it's leather hard. So I wait a day and then I start trimming it. To trim it I place it onto my given grip that will hold it. And then I start trimming it. The bottom was a little bit wonky from cutting it off the bed, but this isn't really a problem. I just go over this a few times to cut away a little bit of clay and make it nice, flat and centered. And I always move my trimming tool from the inside to the outside. And then I cut away a bit more excess clay here at the bottom. And I like to use a flat trimming tool for this because it's easy to keep the straight form of the cylinder. And then I just move a little bit further downwards to make it one fluent shape. And just like that I make it nice and straight and also quite smooth. And I also like to round the corner here a little bit. You can also keep this sharp, but I'd like to have it a little bit rounded. 
And then what I like to do is make a foot on the bottom. So I cut quite some clay out of the bottom to make this a bit thinner. And then I make sure that's nice and flat. And then if you'd like, you can make a hole in your planter. I make a hole by pressing my needle tool into the piece. It's actually quite easy. You just have to hold it very steady and then slowly press it inwards to cut the clay out. And if you don't like to work with the needle tool, you could also trim it away with a small trimming tool. But that's just a little bit more time consuming. And then I smooth out the edges by trimming away a little bit of clay. And then I saw that the bottom could be a little bit thinner. Because when you make the hole you can nicely see how thick your bottom is. So mine was still a little bit too thick. So I cut away a little bit more clay. And then I just defined the sides here by just cutting away a little bit more clay. And making it nice and round. And then to smooth it out I take a wet sponge and I go over the part that I just trimmed. And then I go over it again with this trimming tool. This trimming tool isn't really sharp so it doesn't really trim. But this helps me to get rid of the slip that was created by the sponge. And this helps me to smooth it out. And then I go over it with my finger to smooth it out even more. So that I don't have to sand it or anything. And then the piece is finished and ready to dry before biscuit fire. When it's biscuit fired I start glazing it. I decided to glaze this piece in two different colors. I will be glazing the bottom part of this planter with the glaze pirates white. If I pronounce that correctly. Pirates? Pirates. I don't know. And I just brushed this onto the bottom part, so I decided to glaze the rim and the inside a different color than the bottom part of the planter. And I just brushed this on with a big brush, and I like to hold the piece on this turning table. And then I also like to hold it to glaze the bottom part, and I also hold it in my hand to glaze the rim. And the next glaze that I'm using is Morganite, also from World's Glazes. Both of these glazes are Bots Pro glazes, which means that you can fire them at any temperature. And I really like how these glazes work. You only have to apply two layers when you're firing at a stoneware temperature. So that also saves some time when glazing it. I first put the planter upside down to glaze the rim here and I immediately apply two coats. It is important to let the glaze dry in between coats, but this glaze dries quite fast when I use it. And then I just apply a second coat on the rim and on the inside. And then what I always like to do is twist this piece on top of a wet piece of fabric to get rid of the little bit of glaze that got onto the bottom because you don't want any glaze here. Otherwise it will melt in the kiln and get stuck to your kiln shelf, which is not really pleasant. And then the bottom is nice and clean and ready to go into the glaze fire. And here are some pictures of the final result. That was it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked and learned something new from it. If so, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it yet. And if you're going to make this planter yourself and you're going to post it on Instagram, please tag me at Colors Remix because I would love to see it. I hope to see you next week. Bye!